Alright guys, here is the green, blue, white mill deck I was talking about. I'm going to start off by showing you the land base we're going to be using. I've got the four glacial fortress in here. We've got three hinterland harbor. I'd actually have a fourth one in here, but I actually don't have it right now. So I just went ahead and went with the three that I got. We've got four of the sea chrome coast. I've got four evolving wilds to go fetch those basic lands out that will activate my come into play tap lands. Over here we've got the five forest. It technically only be four forest plus that would be the hinterland harbor. Since we don't have it I just went ahead with another green to make sure that we're going to be safe on casting our fog effects. Now we've got two islands and then we've got two reliquary towers. And I've got the reliquary towers in here because sometimes with the drawing that this deck can generate you're going to end up with more than seven cards and you don't really want to be discarding anything because there's a lot of useful interactions in this deck. Um, this is our main kill card in here, Jace the Memory Adept. I uh, usually don't play him until it's pretty safe to put him out. I can usually back him up with the fog effect. And once he's out on the board, it's going to take an average of about three to four turns to kill your opponent because by that point they should be milled down pretty good. Uh, I've got two Day of Judgments in here because it's always good to have a wrath effect especially once you start running low on fogs this is going to allow you to buy some time by completely wiping the board and it's also going to get rid of threats that you really can't deal with well in this deck which is Hunt's Master of the Falls and uh, Hell Rider. both of those can do things that have nothing to do with combat damage uh, the only creature we got in the deck is the Augur Bolas he's mostly in here so you can make sure you can find all your fog effects uh, or any of the other instances of sorcerers in the deck usually you're looking for the fog effects now he rarely whiffs in this deck because you've got so many uh, uh, instances of sorcerers that you can get but occasionally you will hit like land and land planeswalker or land and land enchantment but not very often I think maybe I've only done it one or two times I've got negates in here uh, negate is in here mostly to take care of things that you're just not going to be able to fog which are direct damage spells. Uh, Devil's Play can give you a lot of problems and so can Bonfire of the Damned. This uh, can take care of you. You need to make sure you use this sparingly and only use it when you need it. Uh, next we've got our card drawing in here. We've got Thought Scour because both it's going to mill your opponent plus it's going to draw you a card. So this works out really well in this deck and it only costs one blue so you can use it uh, you know when you need to find that extra fog, when you need to mill, when you need to find a land it's just a really all around useful card. Now this is your card drawing engine. This is the card that you really need to protect. Uh, Jace is only the second most important card in this deck. This is your first. Without this you're not going to generate enough fog effects to stay alive and you're going to run out really quick. Now it can help your opponent ramp but you have to remember they're only going to get one attack phase each turn no matter how many cards they draw so as long as you can keep at least one fog in your hand you can negate that attack phase uh, sometimes against the red green decks this really will speed them up into a hell rider so a lot of times I'll sideboard down to one of these and bring in some extra spells that will help me out in that matchup uh, next we got trading post I've just now been trying this card out seems to be doing pretty good uh, it allows you to gain some life back late in the game so you if you run out of fog effects you can kind of build a little buffer zone. Uh, the important thing is that it makes the 0-1 uh, goat token and that token can be used with one of the fog effects uh, to make sure that you can fog plus it will act as a, a blocker as needed. Now I've got the beast from within here because there was a lot of stuff coming up that I just couldn't get killed and uh, this card allows me to take care of a lot a lot faster than uh, Oblivion Ring will. Oblivion Ring is a great all around card but at instant speed this works really well plus it's going to allow me to use my fog effects. Now we're going to move into our, our 12 different fog effects. We've got Fog, we've got Terrifying Presence, and we've got Clinging Mist. Now Terrifying Presence can get you in trouble sometimes. So that's why you got to make sure you got an Augur out or you've got a token from this but a lot of times against some of the decks that have a lot of mana dorks in them this card is going to be able to target those without taking any damage and sometimes you may end up just taking one damage if you have to use it on the spot this clinging mist if you're not playing against decks that have a lot of uh, burn in them clinging mist is going to be a really good card for you 
uh, you let the life get down as low as you can, as long as you can hit this fateful hour. So you got to be five life or less. Once you do that, this can be a time walk for you by tapping all your opponent's creatures for the next turn. As long as they don't get something out with haste, this has bought you an extra turn. So look at this as two fogs, but you got to make sure you set up a situation for it. Now let's check out the sideboard and see what we got. Sideboard, I've got two elixirs of immortality. This is going to come in against a lot of aggro decks where I'm going to need this five life back, but it can also come in if you play somebody playing a mill deck, which is not going to happen a lot because it's not a really popular deck right now. The casual players like it, but you're not going to see a lot in tournament play. I've got two Tomod's Crypts just in case we run up against something that's abused in its graveyard significantly or maybe they've got their own elixirs of immortality it helps out also bring in the extra day of judgment against the aggro decks uh, this is basically like bringing an extra fog and this is what I'll probably put in over the rights of flourishing um, against a slower control deck that doesn't have a lot of threats I'm going to side out a few of those fog effects and I'm going to bring in this uh, mind skull Mind Sculptor will let you uh, mill your opponent quite a bit faster and it gives them something that they're going to have to burn a counter spell on. That way you don't have to worry about your Jace. Uh, Oblivion Ring, I'll probably cut a few of these as I work on the deck a little bit more, but this is just a catch-all card and I needed some more of them. Uh, but I'll probably end up taking out two of them and replacing them with an additional two beasts from within. And then the final card in the deck is Elder Scale Worm. There's a, quite a few decks that you're going to have trouble with, which is like the uh, red green aggro deck which I mentioned uh, if you can last long enough to get this guy out and then protect to make sure they can't burn him out with devil's play or bonfire this will help you go ahead and seal the win that way they can't beat you out with hell riders or uh, hunts master um, hope you guys like the deck we're going to try it out in a couple matches here uh, let me know what you think okay you want to see who goes first? Sure. Four. Twelve. Let's put this back on the big two O. There we go. Set this hand to seven yields me. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Definitely a keeper. It's got a little bit of everything we need in it. Probably could use some more of these, but we'll we'll find them. I'm gonna keep mine. I'm uh, keeping mine. I go. Yep. Go ahead. Into life. Okay. And bring out the birthing pot. Ooh. Go ahead. Get this going early. Alright. Okay. Go ahead and draw a card. Now, normally, I probably wouldn't run this card out this fast, but he's got birthing pot out. So, I'd rather him draw the majority of his threats into his hand and not be able to pot into them at will. So we're going to play that. Uh, go ahead. Oh, 
Extract the strangle rib. Okay. Gonna go ahead and pay two to pod him. Yep. We'll pod up. Old school. Yeah. I like that. Rocking the glass beads. <coughs> Blade splicer. It's definitely bringing the beats out. So, it's going to put quite a bit of power on the table. <coughs> Luckily, that's it's okay with this deck. Swing three. Get in there for three, so I'm going to drop this down to 17. We're not really that concerned with our life at this time. It's only once we get down around 10, it starts getting a big problem or <coughs> if there's significant damage on the table. You dump your turn. Yeah, pass. Yeah. So we're going to draw our two cards. One, Let's see. Which is weird. They're both lands. So go ahead and sec that. Never understood the mechanic of having to tap Evolving Wilds and then sacking it. That's just, uh, uh, there's a few little tricks that can come up with some of the older cards that keep abilities from being able to activate like that or uh, counter them with like staff and stuff, which uh, you never have a chance to use it on an Evolving Wild. You just play regular old fetch lands, which would be really good in this deck. Okay, I'll let you cut that. That guy's in the graveyard. He's a real pain against this deck. And we'll draw our card for the turn. Uh, go ahead. So we're starting down. Oh, seven power on the board right now. The ability to pod. Not too bad. Light Spicer. A really good card in the pod deck, I think. Four. Okay. Play Resto Angel. Restoration Angel. Target Blade Spicer. Awesome. So now we're getting to the point of the game where there's going to be significant power on the board. So probably want to soak up as much damage here uh, this turn as we can. Pay two life, tap pod, okay. sack the resto. Okay. Angel is out. Gonna be broken in, guys, down at Merck. Mm. So he's gonna bring in a lot of dudes. That's gonna definitely increase the damage clock. Can't 
probably shuffle his deck like that. That's something people should do where you don't run around with all these bent up cards. Yeah, I know it's real dirt, man. Older. He likes, he just loves to bend your cards. I think it's his man because he's bad. <laughs> Possibility. So, remember guys, easy on the deck. And I guess I'll go ahead and swing for six. Swing for six. So we're just going to go ahead and take that. There's no reason to fog just yet. Patience with this deck. It's important. And pass the turn. Okay. Passes. Get our two cards. One, two. Post. Go ahead. So this turn looks like he's got eight, uh, ten, thirteen, nineteen power on the board. Twenty power if you count the blade splash, which you want to attack with. Maybe he might trick me. Just a lot of targets. I'm gonna go ahead and so not ten. Choose him as my target. So, prevent all combat damage except for what Agro will do. He's going to block this guy just because he can. Okay. Makes no difference. Uh, that's it on that part. I'm going to go ahead since first strike doesn't matter that much. Attack the Resin Verge and attack the Paradise. Okay. Attack that to suck the Splicer. Part in the way splicer. This could be really bad. Go ahead and bring in Metamorph. And we're gonna go ahead and target the dust on monk. Awesome. Some bit some serious damage out there. I don't think I have any more spirits on this. So we're gonna let these guys be spirits. And uh <coughs> Both of these notes are going to be 10 tens. Awesome. That's nice turn. Alright, let's hope we're going to something good here. One, two. Not what we were hoping for. But.
go over here. Access to a lot of mana. Tap all five of those. Okay. Tap. Tap one more. Drop mm -hmm. worm. worm coil. Oh wow. Nice. We'll go ahead and tap two. Tap pod. Okay. Sack the coil. Ooh, some more dooters. Nice. And pod for Elish. Okay, so. I'm going to need a bigger dice. Were they up to 13 13s? Yes. Awesome. Plus the 2 2 from Alice. Oh, yeah. I'm nice. going to swing for 30 with those. I'll play Clanky Mist to bring out combat damage. Pass the turn. better than a fog at this point. Mm. Go ahead. Did you have the fog in hand? Nope, I did not. So, we've been pretty much waiting on that land for quite a while. Well, the pod starts over again. Right. I'm gonna start from scratch now. I really need a second right to flourish you. Really help you keep up with your deck. Get him thinking now. All right, let's just go ahead and tap one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Ooh, another one call. And pass the turn. 
him and choose not to bounce him. Okay. Huh? He has to have a target. Oh, okay. Well, you used some eye ability. Choose not to. Okay. Um, go ahead and tap that. Yep. Tap that. Sack him. Mm. Her, I guess. I'm thrag. Drag to us. Awesome. Twenty one as opposed to two hundred and one. Okay. You're thinning me out, man. Thinning me out. I think you're doing most of the work yourself. Yes, I think you're right. Lots of flourishing isn't helping. No. Those pods are helping me out quite a bit. It's putting you up to like four to five cards each turn. Go ahead, 26. Yeah, you don't have trample, right? Nope. Okay. I'm going to make a goat token. Bam. Get, okay. You get some more life. And I go down to 10. It's over here somewhere, I promise. There it is. Right up. Yes. Well, yeah, it would be tapped. One, two, Twice, no times you're gonna value. Awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely glad not to see that out. It's a really annoying card against the stick. I don't like playing more for my spells. I think they cost too much already. <sighs> Go ahead.
Fire for nine. On fire for nine, huh? Mm -hmm. Puts me a one. Try and finish the deal here. Brian Tuss is targeting you, if it matters. Or, I'm sorry, I'm trying to Jace. Okay, clanging missed. Yeah, and then one on tap next turn. As well, I went down to the one. Okay, I go. Go ahead. Get on tail. Try to straighten these lands up just a little bit to keep my lands kind of neat. There we go. Draw three cards. One, two, three. Uh, we're going to chase you for ten again. Play ourselves an auger. Two, three. Wow, we actually whiffed with it, which is alright. Sort of. It's not ideally what we wanted, but we'll take it. We're yeah. not going to play that. Um, it's going to pass the turn. Choices, choices, choices. So I'm just going to go ahead and not tap first. Not tap first. You got your tip now, man.
Hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and pass turn. Okay, hit a turn. Gonna tap that, discard a card. Wait for a lot. Yeah. Oh, what was that match? 